Okay, so now we've sort of tested the skin in. I'm quite happy with how everything's looking. There's no obvious errors popping up there that we need to fix. We can start to constrain this rig together. So, one way that I'm going to do this. So, the first thing that we'll do actually is start with the arms. So, I'm just going to hide the mesh. We'll make sure everything's shown. And we want the arms to follow along with this upper body control. So, to do that, what we can actually do is get them to follow along with this joint in the middle. So I'm just going to display its rotative axis and it's getting a good influence from this control and later on we can skin the ribbon so skin the nerves curve. So for instance if this joint wasn't rotating as much it would probably mean that it's getting too much influence from one of these controls above or below. So we could repaint that later on but for the moment it's looking like it's getting a good amount of control. So I'll reset that to zero. And all I'm gonna do is create a clavicle for this. So your clavicle is basically the bone bony bit at the back to the left and right of your shoulders. And the arm joint is basically just a ball joint that is stuck into your scapula at the back. Oh no, the, I take my words back. Um, the clavicle, sorry, is at the front, so that bony bit that you can feel at the front, which is more like a tube bone, and the scapula is sort of that triangular, sh triangular shaped bone, taking up the area at the back. So we want the scapula. So we just want a clavicle control, which is just guess, basically going to be a joint further up here and a joint down here that we can rotate from a pivot up here which is going to be the sort of movement that we get from the scapula and the clavicle. So to do that all we need to do is just show get the joint tool up. I'm just going to vert snap it to character mesh and press enter. And I'll just hide the mesh for the moment and vert snap it up to this first joint here and I'm going to hit control D and move this to where I want it to pivot from so I'm just going to hide the nerve surfaces and I'll probably say somewhere around here so I'm looking at the topology here of that sort of scapula shape and I'll probably rotate it from a bit further up around here and then we can probably move that in a bit if we want. Okay, so I'm quite happy with that. So I'm going to select the joint that we snapped in here. It might be quite hard to select, so I'll zoom in. Shift select the other joint and just hit P to parent. So the idea is basically, if I select this middle little joint here, quite hard to select and again what we're going to do is increase the radius I'm going to put 1.5 because this one is going to be driving the arm so it's going to be driving the joint that's inside it so selecting that then shift selecting the arm joint we can see it's translator free so what we're going to do is we're going to go to constraint and point I'll make sure I maintain offsets on even though they're snapped on top of each other I just tend to leave it on when I, I know when I want them then when I know that they're in the correct place and I just hit apply so all this means that the arm is going to follow the translates of this joint so if we were to rotate from a point further up so this clavicle joint up here you can see now how this is sort of shrugging his shoulders so getting that shrugging shoulders sort of movement and this means also I can move forward and backwards so it's just giving an extra degree of freedom over the arm, because really the arm is just a ball joint that can rotate in its socket and then it's actually the scapula and the clavicle that can actually lift that arm, that socket joint up and down and forward and back so really it's quite flexible the shoulder and you'll see later on that this is going to be one of the areas where you get the most 
problems skinning because it's one of the areas that has the most deformation it's got that rotation that ball joint but it can also translate up down left and right so in here I'm just going to rename these again keeping it so JT uh, JT DRV because these are used for skinning left clav A and score 1 and clav B okay so we've got that in there and what I can actually do is go to skeleton and we're just going to mirror these joints over so make sure I search for left replace with R hit apply and we'll do the same over here we'll select the driver joint, select the arm go to um, constraint and point so we've got that on either side now I'm shrugging and what we're going to do here is we're just going to select both these joints shift select the inner joint that's connected to the ribbon because remember we want it to follow the ribbon we don't want it to follow the driver joint the driver joint is driving the ribbon the ribbon's the thing which, which is actually going to be driving the skin so we want these joints to be connected to that and we're just going to hit P so this now means where we've removed this control you can see the arms are going to follow along and it's all, at the moment it's the only the start of the arms because if you think if you grab hold of the table and then keep hold of the table and start moving your body around it's the same as this character here he might be grabbing two objects that are static at the sides and his body's moving about so we want to be able to have that control where the arms can stay still but later on we're also going to add in a control so we can make the arms follow the body so for instance if we were spinning round and spinning our arms at the same time we want that control as well so we'll add that in a bit later on so that's looking quite good quite happy with that moving it up and for these basically we don't really need to connect any joints there's no real reason to connect these up so what we're actually going to do is just select these two and just hit P to pair them and actually I'm just going to undo that because if we remember if we press up these had the rotate offset groups so I'm going to select both curves hit up once and I'm just going to press F in the outliner so I can check I've got those two rotate offset groups selected and again I've been bad as well myself I've got to rename these so I'll rename these to the right and if you ever see anything like this popping up just rename it as you go along but if you ever see anything just make sure you do it on the spot so it doesn't get left behind so rename these to the right side and re make sure we rename that rotate offset group as well to the right or one okay so we'll select these two curves so we can see their rotate offset groups make sure we select the rotate offset groups select the upper body control just hit P to parent so this just means wherever we remove the head you can see these antennas are going to come along with it and that's basically what we want because the same as the arms we can have the ends of the antennas attached to things like with the arms we might want the head to move but the antenna stay behind so another character might have grabbed his antenna so it's staying behind but we always want these bottom controls anchored to that head control we never want these to float off and separate off we do want the control to say like move these up so we could start moving these about or wiggling them and rotate them about but we don't want to ever have them snap away from this upper body control so that's the way we're going to connect them up okay so it's pretty much all connected so the next thing we're going to do is just add we want to add a control curve in here for his arm 
So what we're going to do is show the grid, and I'm just going to go to curves, make sure it's on linear, and we're going to create another control curve. So I'll go in the front view, and we'll go above the character this time. And just before I do that, I'll make sure I'll reset these curves to zero. And this is where it's really important to freeze transformations because if I didn't freeze transformations, putting in zero would snap everything back to the origin, which is going to be a catastrophe when we start animating. So I'm making sure the curve's on linear, and I'm just going to click out an arrow. And then I'll just center the pivot on this. And then hiding the mesh, I'm just going to vert snap it to the joint over here. And instead of moving this outside of the mesh so we can't really see what's going on inside the mesh, all I'm going to do is move this to the side and up and move it into position so I'm only moving it in Y and Z so I'm not moving it, I mean Y and X sorry so I'm not moving it in Z so I know it's still parallel with that control get into some sort of position and then I just press insert and vert snap it back so vert snap the pivot back now what I could actually do here as well is do the same as we've done before with the rotate offset groups because this is aiming down here and we might want that nice twist along there so we might want to twist it along the joint so before we do this we might want to set the rotations of these joints up so I'm just going to hide the mesh again and actually um, I'm just going to pause the video here and we'll go through that in the next tutorial so in the next tutorial we're going to get the rotates of these to aim down the bone again on both sides and attach this control so we can get the clavicle on both sides working.